It's that time once again as another My Hero Academia episode has come and gone, and this week I really need to go plus ultra to give it a review. My reviews are going to work in a way where I talk about the new episode and its contents while glancing over what I think was cool, talk about my favorite character for the episode and least favorite, and then talk about my favorite and least favorite moment from the episode as well. Let's wait no longer and find out exactly what is going on with All Might from the man himself. Things open up for moments prior to the post credit scene of episode 3, when Deku and Tagata walking down the street and discussing exactly what it is they're out and about to do. While Sir Night Eye and Bubble Girl are supposed to be keeping an eye on Overhaul, it is up to Deku and Tagata to patrol the streets and stay out of their way. Tagata shares of Deku what his hero name is, that being Lamillion. And just as their patrol is getting truly into action, the post credit scene from episode 3 happens. Eerie bumps into Deku and he immediately tries to help her up, but she winces back into him. Overhaul steps out from the alleyway and Deku instantly tenses up, recognizing him from the picture Sir Night Eye showed him just before they went out on patrol. Eerie doesn't want to go back with Overhaul and Deku realizes that quickly. The Overhaul tries to play things smoothly and has a normal conversation with the heroes, referring to Eerie as his daughter and implying she is merely upset because he just got done scolding her. Eerie's grasp on Deku doesn't waver, asking him to not let her go, which of course sends the fledgling symbol of peace into hero mode. While Tagata is doing what he can to get Deku to leave the situation so they don't get too involved with Overhaul, Deku refuses to leave the situation due in part to a realization that there is something very wrong with Eerie and her fear of Overhaul is incredibly real. Deku questions several things about Overhaul and his relationship with Eerie, and finally he decides that he'll explain a few things to Tagata and Deku, and they follow him down an alleyway so they don't have to talk about everything in the open. Not long after, the descent into the darkness of the alley begins. Overhaul begins to fidget with his glove and locks eyes with Eerie, scaring her immensely. She leaves from Deku's arms and runs back to Overhaul, realizing that he had fully intended on using his quirk on the two heroes if they had continued to follow him. Tagata remarks on this, taking note that Eerie had recognized Overhaul's murderous intent and went back to him to spare the two students. Deku's desires as a hero are to follow, but Tagata tells him it would be a bad idea as it is possible they'd scare Overhaul into hiding and that it would ruin Sir Night Eye's investigation. They then link back up with Night Eye and Bubble Girl and fill them in on what just went down. Overhaul is seen bringing Eerie back to some lair and kills a subordinate of his who allowed her to escape in the first place. He refers to people as being infected with hero syndrome and eventually leads Eerie to a presumably familiar room to her with the chair used to strap people down, referring to her as the crux to his plan. Deku speaks of a desire to protect Eerie, and Sir Night Eye immediately shoots him down for being arrogant. He promotes the idea that making haste is more often than not a waste, meaning that if the agency was to pursue Overhaul now and try and protect Eerie, the odds of Overhaul actually escaping would be incredibly increased. In what might be a slight toward Deku being All Might's successor, Sir Night Eye proclaims that Deku isn't special enough to be able to just save anybody because he has the desire to. Night Eye will instead pursue the help of other agencies and work towards a plan of deducing what Overhaul's next move will be and come up with a complete plan to go against him. Back at UA, Class 1A is going about their regular school day, featuring more human from Bakugo and Todoroki who are clearly beaten up as a part of their provisional license makeup classes. As speculated in the last episode, Fropi, Uroraka, and Kirishima are now working at agencies thanks to their connections with the Big Three, and we'll be seemingly be finding out more about that as the next episode airs. The events of the day prior continue to weigh down on Deku in class, and his thoughts get in his way of learning so much that he finally decides to confront the one thing he can, All Might. As it turns out, All Might is on a jog, and Deku decides to go find him and discuss the things Sir Night Eye has told him. Deku catches up with All Might and immediately asks him if he knew about Sir Night Eye, believing Togata was the one who should inherit one for all. Deku shares that he is in a serious state of confusion and disbelief that All Might didn't share this information with him, more so due to a worry of why he wouldn't. All Might reveals that he never wanted to have a psychic, but for five years the two worked together. Then six years prior to where the story is now, all Might and Sir Night Eye ended their partnership after the fight with All for One that injured All Might as badly as it did. Sir Night Eye pleaded with All Might to retire after the fight, proclaiming that he should go out as a legend instead of probably dying on the battlefield. All Might immediately refuses, saying he needs to go back to protect the people who rely on him. Night Eye pushes for All Might to search for a successor like him at UA, so that All Might can finally move on and enjoy a comfortable retirement and no longer put himself in danger. All Might's response is that there would be no one to act as a symbol of peace until he finds a successor, and thus he can't do something like that. Night Eye uses his four set the scene to the future and tells All Might that a new number one would appear in his place. That it would just take a while, but the world can handle not having him until it happens. The strong sense of justice within All Might makes him again refuse that reality because he can't stand the thought of so many people being afraid while he is no longer active as a hero. Night Eye says he will no longer help All Might if he continues on, but All Might decides that for the sake of the world, he can't be held up in a hospital even contemplating retirement, and deduces that no matter what, Nenai's foresight wouldn't be wrong anyway. One day, All Might will die a gruesome death at the hands of a villain. 
Night-Eye says there is no way to know for sure that his foresight is always correct, and that is the rift that drove the two apart. Alma then informs Deku that right before he was about to meet Tagata, he met him instead. He decided that he would be the best person to pass one for all down to, and even went as far as to tell Night-Eye that he would choose him, to which his former psychic fly out rejected. But All Might says he has worked hard to stay alive because he promised Deku's mom that he would so he could continue to help raise Deku into the new symbol of peace. All Might even transforms into his muscular form for a moment, reassuring Deku he will do everything in his power to remain alive for as long as possible to help him. The two share a great moment of promising to help one another twist fate and go against the future laid out so they can create a better one and things come to an end there. In the post credits, Shigaraki and Overhaul once again meet together to discuss a possible partnership and under a certain set of conditions that we should find out in the next week's episode. Shigaraki agrees to work with Overhaul. The preview for the next episode shows off Kirishima on his work study with the pro hero Fat Gum, and it will also feature the fated conversation between Shigaraki and Overhaul. Seems like we'll get to know some more about the other main characters for this season. My favorite part of the episode and character goes hand in hand, that being All Might and his conversation with Deku. I love All Might, and I think it's pretty safe to say that almost all my Hero Academia fans love him as well. He is one of the characters that you can't help but cheer for and be on the side of, which is pretty much in line with how people in the show's world view him as well. Finding out that he is indeed near death as predicted by Sir Night Eyes Foresight is a hard pull to swallow, but watching him still put on a smile on the face of that near future was inspiring. There is nothing that All Might wouldn't do for Deku at this point, and he'll even fight the change of future so he can help him continue to grow until he isn't needed anymore. Finding out about the reasons why he and Sir Night Eye broke off their partnership really lends credence to the fact that All Might has only ever wanted to help people, and the thought of even one person being scared to live in a world without him at all was enough to drive him to continue to fight the villains up until the final battle with All for One. My least favorite character in this episode was Overhaul, and that's because they're really writing him as a good villain. I hate the fact that he is seemingly holding Eerie captive and using her for something nefarious, and I hate how easily he is able to lie to people and put up a front. The guy has become a great villain in the short time we've known him, and it makes him very unlikable for the right reasons. That's gotta be my least favorite moment in the episode too, having to watch Eerie go back with him and leave Deku completely unsure of his ability to protect people. It's hard to watch someone go back to an obvious abuser because they feel it's the only thing they can do to try and protect others, and for a child to have to go through that, Man, like I said, they're really making Overhaul look bad, and my desire to see Deku take him out grows stronger by the week. That's gonna do it for my review of My Hero Academia Season 4, Episode 4, Fighting Fate. If you guys enjoyed this one, let me know in the comments below, and subscribe to Mystic Sage notifications on so you don't miss my review of next week's episode. I've got a lot of great videos about My Hero already on the channel, and about plenty of other anime as well with more to come. I hope you guys are as hyped to go plus ultra as I am, and I'll see you guys next time with another review of My Hero Academia Season 4.